Some of the things to think about on a drop shot is length of leader, the further up from the weight or the shorter. And a lot of times I fish a tag, you know, real short. I love to fish a real short tag. I don't really have a, you know, if there's grass, I like to fish it a little bit higher or whatever. But here's the thing to think about. Let me just rig this up real quick. Is that to me, a drop shot is all about rate of fall. Because when you're fishing this technique, you're fishing in clear water. So you're fishing for sight feeding fish. And what you're trying to do is pull the fish to the bait. Whether they're hungry or curious, you're trying to get them to come obviously and, and bite the bait. Drop shot weights. They range in sizes. I fish, you know, from a 30 second uh, all the way up to a three quarter ounce on a drop shot weight. Because again, what I said earlier, it's rate of fall. Uh, and I'm gonna put this weight on here and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here I'm fishing a quarter because I'm dragging on the bottom. I have not had a bite on this lake yet on the fall. Everything's been, you know, working it on the bottom. So I haven't really been trying to key off of speed, rate of fall. And a quarter with this little short, what I call a shrimp grass, kind of comes through a little bit better. But this is what I'm trying to explain about length of leader rate of fall. So when I cast this bait out and let it fall on a slack line, this weight has energy and it's falling. Well, whatever lure you're using and however you have it rigged up on the hook, basically in clear water to a sight feeding fish, looks like this is chasing this. And this is one of the reasons why I like to use a real shiny drop shot weight. Tunskin weight works perfect, but I like to polish them and keep them real bright because again, it looks like this is chasing that. That, all right, that right there is just the beginning of triggering the curiosity of a fish. You know, all of a sudden there's something going on and it catches their attention. Well, obviously the faster this falls, maybe it's gonna trigger them a little bit quicker. That's just something you have to play around with in current conditions. When this weight hits the bottom, the energy has to be released. In other words, the momentum stops well when it stops it stops on the worm so what however you have it rigged think about it it's going to you and all of a sudden thunk, it stops well it really just doesn't stop if you fish it on a slack line sometimes i like a bait when it stops it kicks out it planes out but here's where length of leader is real important from the time your bait hits the bottom if you make the cast and leave your line slack don't flip the bell and pick up on the rod tip. You're allowing this to free fall all the way to the bottom. And that's where length of leader comes real important to me because a lot of times the fish like that long fall. Sometimes, I mean, I've, I've been known to use a quite long leader sometimes uh, because I'm just letting that bait plane out, let it do its thing. It's one of the reasons why the most important thing to me with a drop shot is when the angler makes the cast, or I like to pitch it a lot, leave the bell open and let it fall on a slack line. Do not flip the bell and lift the rod tip up because when you do, you kill everything I was just talking about. Now you're pulling the bait before it even really gets to the bottom. The bait never had a chance to work because you're pulling it. Uh, pitch it out, leave your line slack and just watch your line on the water. That's one of the cool things about a braid splice uh, a lot of times I use my knot as, as kind of like a strike indicator because I can see that knot sliding in the water and you can tell whether you get bit or not. Just little things to remember, uh, but it's little things like that that really are going to elevate you as an angler fishing a drop shot rig.